Hello, my name is Joachim Wiesma and welcome by AA's art channel. And today I'd like to show you how I uh, painted this painting of those uh, uh, two uh, crows on a vent. And uh, therefore I uh, used the acrylics for the in-focus piece, uh, pieces and uh, the airbrush for the out-of-focus pieces, especially on the background. And um, yeah, it may uh, seem uh, quite hard to use the airbrush, but it, for, the, for those um, looser backgrounds for those out of focus backgrounds it's uh, quite simple actually to use the airbrush it's not that hard as it looks and uh, also the trick there is to use uh, quite a few colors and also um, uh, watch your light and your darks and um, yeah you, you don't have to uh, hold the, camp, uh, the airbrush uh, closely to the canvas but you want to um, have it a little bit more far, further away of the canvas and you can make uh, beautiful out of focus uh, uh, backgrounds. So therefore I like to use the airbrush. And um, yeah, the, the size of the canvas is uh, 40 centimeters by 1 meter. And um, yeah, I found this uh, very useful this for this uh, photo because uh, yeah, the, the fence uh, makes uh, uh, a lot of that horizontal feel in a piece and I like that. And therefore I chose this uh, size of canvas. So let's get over to the tutorial. And I really like the airbrush for uh, filling in those backgrounds. You can make beautiful out of focus backgrounds. And even though you may not always know what you are painting, because it's not uh, that defined, you uh, just want to stick to your reference and uh, reference photo and uh, watch closely how the shapes are um, going, uh, I, uh, I should say, in the background. And also you want to uh, use quite some different colors to build up that back background. Even though it's out of focus, it will give a much richer uh, feel to your, uh, to your end piece. And um, yeah, like I said, I just uh, try to copy my shapes there and um, filling in uh, the background with uh, quite some different colors. And on the trees, I use some green, but most of the times I was uh, using brown tints. And, um, yeah, like I said, I uh, like to glaze over a little bit of green to uh, give the feel of the leaves there on the on the trees. But um, yeah, uh, most of the time it was done in brown tints. And uh, then I filled up my uh, in-focus pieces with a mid-toned uh, gray color. So I uh, noticed uh, could notice a little bit better where those plants uh, were, were going, who were slightly a little bit... Um, more in focus so I came back with the airbrush and um, I'm painted those in and therefore I um, used of I hold my airbrush a little bit closer to the canvas not too close because I don't want to make too harsh lines but I would it uh, would paint those plants a little bit more in focus so therefore I uh, ended up to, uh, to having the airbrush a little bit closer to the canvas and also just Try to copy what I see, try to copy the shapes I saw in the reference photo and also using quite some different colors there and especially light and darks. That uh, is, uh, is uh, what you need there to give it a, uh, yeah, a realistic feel. And uh, then you saw, and also you see me now doing that, uh, painting in wood. And when, most of the times when I paint wood, I uh, leave uh, my brush strokes show, uh, show up in the... Um, end results because the wood is most of the time a little bit rougher than uh, the rest of the uh, the piece and therefore I'm making quite some lines here and even though they may not seem to make sense on this moment but when I'm glazing them um, uh, uh, when I'm toning them down with my glazes they will uh, give the uh, st structure I need for the wood so uh, in a bit you will see me do that and also you will uh, see me uh, painting on some moss uh, uh, there was some uh, moss growing on the, on the vents even though it was uh, not much but uh, of, I, liked, uh, I should say it was uh, quite flat moss but I uh, therefore I used this, this for a brush to uh, give the uh, feel of the moss on the, on the wood there and um, yeah basically I'm uh, painting in new layers i'm glazing again painting in new uh, layers make some structure and i repeat this until i like the piece it's uh, i don't know when i started painting how much glazes i need i just paint and i um yeah i, I uh, continue another piece uh, of the painting when i'm like it and when i think it's uh, it's uh, enough 
uh, on a moment and um, yeah maybe on, uh, maybe later on I will come back to it to uh, give it a little bit more most of the time a little bit more highlights there but uh, yeah basically I paint uh, and glaze as much uh, until I like it because uh, when I uh, like I said when I uh, starting out a new piece I don't know how much glazes I will be using uh, but um, most of the time I end up using quite some layers and when I started out painting, I uh, would uh, stop glazing uh, too early. I had to paint uh, in more glazes, but I was uh, uh, too afraid to uh, put in those layers. And uh, yeah, basically not knowing what I uh, was doing there. But uh, yeah, I uh, know now that I need uh, uh, quite some layers there. And uh, that, um, because uh, then you will end up uh, making... Um, quite some nice colors, some vibrant colors, which I uh, like uh, very uh, very well, so uh, therefore uh, I use uh, quite some glazes. And what I also had to learn was that uh, when I'm painting in details, you don't always want to have uh, your hand too close to the bristles uh, of the, the brush, so to hold it up uh, too close, and um, because you will end up making uh, some, uh, some harsh lines, and uh, that uh, was very difficult for me in the be beginning of uh, my painting uh, career because yeah I uh, was uh, too afraid to make some uh, uh, wrong lines or doing something wrong and um, uh, making wrong shapes that that kind of things but yeah you uh, if you do that if you hold it too uh, up too close to the bristles uh, the, the the brush um, yeah you it will uh, give you that stiff look so I had to uh, learn to paint in a little bit looser and holding the handle uh, uh, of holding my hand in the middle of uh, the handle of the brush to give in uh, to get a, a, a little bit yeah quite uh, some looser lines even though on the feathers it will give you that uh, more natural look if you hold your your hand in uh, yeah in the middle of the handle of the brush of uh, up uh, to the end a little bit more and you can make beautiful uh, lines who will look much natural than you may think in the beginning and uh, yeah that was something i had to learn i f found it quite hard because when i'm uh, making a, p a pastel piece i uh, use uh, quite uh, some pencils on that and i al always hold those pencils uh, up to the quite a uh, uh, close to the to the point of the pencil and uh, but yeah but uh, with brushes you will uh, uh, get used to having uh, your hand in the middle of the handle of each further to the to the back and uh, yeah if you are afraid just try it on a different piece and you will end up making uh, very very nice brush strokes and uh, yeah they will uh, look great of course in your painting so uh, yeah only on this uh, detailed pieces as uh, on this uh, rope you see me do here I hold my hand quite uh, closely to the bristles just to uh, give a to have a little bit more control uh, over the brush but that's only on the uh, really really defined and fine details the rest of the painting I will hold my uh, hand in the middle of the handle of the brush and also when I'm making those details I uh, will glaze over them and uh, you also will find when you do that when you glaze over them that the, the parts of the painting you have painted in will come together and that's the nicest thing of uh, glazing that's such a wonderful uh, thing to see happening in your pieces uh, yeah because you see the the the, the contrast between bo both both um, the colors and when you're glazing over enough uh, when you use enough glazes you will bring those uh, harsh lines together i uh, i could say and that's uh, so wonderful and um yeah like you see uh, here i'm painting in some uh, some feathers again and most of the time i uh, just uh, uh, added some highlights there and uh, i can uh, you see the highlights better in uh, and when I'm almost done with the painting. And here you see the actual uh, end piece of the painting. I hope you like it. Please let me know. And um, yeah, that was it for this one. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below this video. And um, yeah, if you like, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and on my own website. Those links uh, uh, will be uh, in the video description below this video. 
And uh, for now, if you like this video or my audio other videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would really like that. And um, yeah, for now, I hope to see you at my next video. Bye-bye.